Hi folks, uh, it's raining and it's windy in the UK and I can't fly. I know, I know it's hard to believe, but that's how it is. So I thought, you know, it's Saturday, I um, haven't put a video out for a while. I'll try doing all these kind of little vlogs to let people be interested in hearing what I've got to say, but um, you know, I'll do it anyway, um, I'm sure I'll get comments either way. Um, so yeah, a bit of an update on what I've been doing really, and um, kind of like tell you what I'm going to be doing in the future. So um, I did get out and fly last week with the Dart XLE, went out to, with the new, new fuselage on INAF 4, flew it. Um, it launched amazingly uh, with stock settings. Uh, here's a clip of the actual launch itself. Uh, but when it was in the air, it, it ten had a tendency to want to pitch up all the time under power. I was struggling with that, so um, I don't know what it's the thrust angle of the motor or something I need to do in INAV. Um, I still don't have that much experience of dealing with some of these problems that you get with INAV and certainly this pitch up one has been an issue for me for ages with um, with this plane. So if anyone's got any suggestions about things I might might look at then obviously I'll, I'll look at that. But anyway, um, bottom line is I, I auto trimmed it and when it landed, it landed with the yellow on something like that because that was obviously trying to counteract the, the pitch up all the time. I then very stupidly um, mechanically trimmed the plane at 1500 with the elevons in that position. And when I launched it the second time, which you'll see on this clip, uh, as I launched it, it couldn't get sufficient resolution to get the right climb angle. So it tried to climb, couldn't make it, and then crashed down into the ground. Luckily, it landed down on its belly. But when it did that, it snapped off this wing, um, the end of the wing. OK, so we've got the run cam on the other cover. So. Uh... Let's try and get an auto launch from behind. I've now mechanically trimmed it. It's quite far out, actually. Um, so, yeah, the elevons are actually pointing down quite a lot. So I'm not sure if I've got everything quite right on this plane with regards to the pitch alignment. So um, we'll put it up and see how it goes anyway. Return to launch. Ignition on. All right, 10 second countdown. Oh, didn't go up for some reason. I think those elevons are completely wrong. You can see on this wing exactly where it kind of fractures. It fractures from just in front of the leading edge protector down to this thin area uh, alongside the elevon. So the only mods I've done to the, um, the Dart XL, apart from the usual mods, is I've just uh, made these reinforced pieces here that go in the curve of the, uh, the wings. These wing tips on the Dart XL are really, really the flimsiest part. And when you land, if you catch them, they tear off because uh, the foam on these is, is pretty dreadful, actually. It's a great plane, it looks great, flies great, but it's very delicate. So apart from the skid plates on the end to stop it grinding away, a uh, bit of 1.5 millimeter PLA, um, and while it's still kind of warm, bonded in there to follow the curve to make that, well, really much stronger. Probably made it too strong now, probably tear the whole wing off if I catch it on the ground, but hey-ho. So I designed this. It's uh... 0.4 of a millimetre, so you get two passes on your 3D printer, which makes it flexible but still very, very strong. And then I bonded that in with E6000 or Goop um, into the wing, and so it bridges across from the winglet all the way down past that weak area um, to kind of now with E6000, it's quite a flexible glue, so it, it's not completely rigid to make it brittle, so it will, won't shatter hopefully the PLA, it'll have a little bit of give but sufficient additional strength to stop from getting torn off. Essentially, when, when the, the wing, when on a, an XLE you land, if you catch the this kind of downward wing tip, underslung wing tip on the ground, it tends to put a lot of force on it and tear it off. It's a shame that they didn't actually design the XLE like on the, on the AR Pro, where this, this winglet actually curved upwards and this was a flat surface underneath. It wouldn't catch on the ground so much. So um, I've put those on, on the XLE. Uh, on both sides so you can see here I've got this insert now uh, in here uh, it's much stronger uh, it does feel a lot stronger actually uh, no idea if it's going to work but really need to try and figure out do, to do something to protect those winglets so the next mission for this plane will be to take it back out again solve this pitching problem um, and then go for some long range AR Pro wise um, a little bit of an issue with the AR Pro um, on landing 
this little corner of the winglet there, tore that off, so I've just done, started the repair on that. Um, but what I'm going to do, as I've done with the end of the uh, Elevon, I've put some PLA plates top and bottom, I'm going to make and design some PLA plates that go on this curve here, top and bottom, very thin again, but just to protect that corner, because that corner on, on these uh, winglets is extremely weak, to be honest. Uh, here's a, so here's a, a winglet, and you can see here, this is like, it's so flexible, it's untrue. It, it, so, yeah, so I'm going to put a little plate inside and outside on there just to reinforce that corner. On the AR Pro front, um, I've also managed to, to get two new air units. Um, I like the traditional DJI ones. Uh, I've not tried the, like the Vista version. I did notice that when they come now, they do actually say they're from Cadex FPV. So I think, don't think that DJI themselves actually sell these anymore. Um, so I've had to get two at a really, really good price um, on AliExpress. So I'm delighted with that. And um, I've got two because well, one for my mini draft build but also I'm going to build another AR Pro. In fact, there's a bit of a story behind that. So when I crashed this one, or its predecessor, and destroyed it, I actually bought two black ones with the intention of having one AR Pro DJI Proximity and one long range AR Pro with Li on. Um, but then last week I got a message from Banggood to say that they had an offer on the eSheen version of the AR Pro, the white one, well, you know, 50 pounds, I have, just had to buy it. So what I've ended up with is three AR Pros, but I've got a white one and a black one, and that's allowed me to create this like hybrid type of design. I'm not sure how to mix and match them yet. If anyone's got any ideas about the colour scheme in terms of the, uh, the hatches, the fuselage, the wings and the winglets, then please let me know. So yeah, I've got two planes that look really quite different um, with the different colour schemes. So one is going to be obviously long range, but the other one I'm going to well, I'm going to put, run it on 6S. This is all for a bit of a bit of fun really. I've no idea if it's going to work. It'll be any faster. Probably crash it anyway. Uh, or but yeah, it's going to be fun trying. So 6S. Um, spoken to my friend Mark. He suggests maybe a T motor. I think he said the, the T or the F100 or 1000. I can't remember what he said, but I'll, I'll check it out with him and look that up. Um, but basically make it as aerodynamic as possible. So maybe get um, use some of the Menace um, VTX antennas for DJI and, and, and put them onto the body of the fuselage so there's not much drag there. Maybe put some tape over these hatches to keep them really nice and smooth and just keep it absolutely as lightweight as I possibly can. Um, use, the, um, use the Naked Bro GoPro, so you know, design a new nose for the Naked GoPro. I mean, the Naked GoPro compared to the full-size GoPro. I mean, I think this weighs about 27 grams. I'm not, not sure what that weighs. It feels pretty heavy with a battery, maybe over 100 grams, well over 100 grams. So that will really help me with the, the lightness for the super fast AR Pro. I think I might call it the Pro Plus. I think that's got a nice ring to it. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing that. Um, and, and finally, I have figured out, well, I haven't figured out, Mark, my friend, suggested after I was scratching my head why I couldn't get the black box to work. It was because the SD cards needed formatting, that simple. Um, so I formatted the SD cards and now I'm getting black box data. So the next time I take out the, um, the AR Pro on DJI and I, I, I post process with Real Steady Go, I'll be able to add the Dashware OSD so that viewers can see the plane's speed, its altitude and various other information, power consumption, etc. Um, which I think makes it a lot more interesting than just watching FPV. I mean, I, I actually love watching FPV videos. I've watched so many and, and I guess that's why I'm so inspired by other people to try and make good FPV videos of landscapes and new areas that I'm going to be flying. So over the summer, I'm hopefully going to travel to different places and fly interesting areas every weekend or whenever I get the chance and, and basically produce videos like that, as well as maybe do a few more of these videos if people think it's something interesting. So yeah, that's it. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the British weather will have a window of opportunity tomorrow, Sunday, for a couple of hours to go and try the XLE. Um, I did manage to get out last Friday with the AR Pro, but I really, I'll put a little clip up maybe at the end of the video of that footage, but I really want to go out and produce a really good video for that new spot um, and uh, put the OSD on it. So yeah, I think that's it for now. Until next time, hope everybody takes care of themselves and has a great fun flying.